On the phone with me is the first-year head coach of the Powell Panthers. His team right now is ranked to top our YOPreps.com Coaches and Media Class 3A poll, and that is Chase Kistler with the Powell High School Panthers. Coach, first of all, thanks so much for your time today. Let's talk about, uh, number one, a 2-0 and start to the season. What have you seen out of your squad in the first two games? Well, they just, you know, they, they've been playing pretty hungry. Um, I see that just on film that we get after the other team. Uh, we definitely like being the more physical team up front. And, you know, they we're just tackling well, too, as a team. Um, and execution, uh, I, I've seen that very early on, just the little little points that they're doing well. As I mentioned, you're in your first year as head coach, but you've been around this program for quite a while. You guys knew you had a lot of players returning off the runner-up team. Has this team kind of been motivated by the way last year finished at all, Coach? I think it's been motivating, and throughout the summer, really, these guys were kind of on their own. Um, I saw, you know, coming in early that these guys actually did a lot of stuff on their own to get ready. Uh, for the season in terms of, you know, weight training throughout the summer, throwing the football with the, you know, receivers when they can. Uh, I definitely saw a difference just in the mentality of the guys. They did a lot of stuff on their own that prepared them for this summer. Um, I'm not sure if it was the way they finished last season. I think last season gave them a little bit of confidence of this is how good we could be when we stay healthy and we've got our whole team here. So I think there was a little bit of a confidence booster and then, Feelings the limit, sky's the limit type thing of making it all the way to the state championship. You guys did not play a game last week because of situations in Douglas. What type of impact did that have on your team? You know, I'm, I think it, it was kind of uh, trying to make a positive out of a negative. You know, definitely the negative was is we just didn't get to play football, and that's really what these guys' main goal is is to play football. But some positives, it gave us some guys some rest that needed it, um, helped us injuries, you know, with some of the guys' injuries. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I'm not sure how much it's going to hurt us in terms of because we were rolling pretty good. Things were clicking. Hopefully we can continue that just with the little break in there. And then also, you know, just improving every week and not tackling every week. Uh, I'm kind of curious how that kind of throws a kink into things too. So, but I know the, the positives are we got a lot of rest. We got guys healthy again. So we should see that this week. Talk about some of your guys that are kind of leading the way. Uh, Landon looks like he's off to a pretty good start at the quarterback position. Talking about Landon Langfelder. And he is. He's, he's doing a good job. Our offense is really geared around that if we run the ball well, it takes a lot of pressure off of him. So when he does have to throw the ball, it's not uh, a a 10, 15 yard pass. It's you, you've got options. You can go five, ten. We call it first down, touchdown, or check down is is his read. So um, if he's if he's got those options every time to drop back, it makes his life a little bit easier. But he's doing well running the ball and throwing the ball. It helps being a versatile quarterback. Absolutely. What about your kind of one-two punch in the backfield between Riley Bennett and Reed Smith? What are you seeing out of those guys? Both tailbacks are running extremely hard. They're both healthy. We actually, one of them kind of got dinged in the game against uh, Lander. So Reed's back to 100%. And then, you know, he threw a torn in the mix. And then you're also getting Caden Abraham back this week, who's a senior. He was our senior starting tailback last year. So we are definitely deep in that position, which is good because we are a run-heavy team. What about defensively? You mentioned how they, they've started so well. And I know a lot of these guys play both sides of the ball. Uh, Torin Graham is kind of leading you from a defensive standpoint, but what have you seen out of guys on that side of the ball that maybe are more of your leaders? Up front, we, we've got a couple guys that draw double teams, which takes a lot of pressure off the linebackers. Okay, um, It allows them to read and flow to the ball. And and really, we, we don't do anything that fancy on defense. It's really alignment and assignment is what we preach and so they don't have to think. They can just line up, and then they're just flying to the ball. Um, and that's always kind of been our defensive philosophy. And and it just allows the guy to play fast. And if we play fast, we are definitely a pretty darn good defense. Let's talk about this week's game. It is the big Park County rivalry uh, against uh, the Cody Bronx there to the west. Uh, what kind of conversation starts in a rivalry week like this, especially since you've been around this one for a while? You know, it's it's like a game any other week, but 
there's there's always just a sense of pride that comes with Cody Powell. Um, you know, living so close to each other, they they want they want to be the team that says that we beat them this last season. Um, and there's that pride that goes with it. And and they they kind of hang their hat on it for the rest of the school year. You know, if we if we can beat them in football. Powell can, then, you know, they get to hang their hat the rest of the school year that we got them in football. So uh, there is a lot of pride that goes with it. And a lot of these a lot of these guys are actually uh, buddies, you know, Cody Powell. They're actually friends um, outside of football. And so there's, there again, there's that pride thing. You just want to beat your buddy. And they know each other pretty well. They know they've played against each other since middle school, elementary school. So there is, there's a huge sense of pride that goes with it. Gotcha. What do you think of when you when you see Coach McFadden's squad? Because I, I look at, and I know it's not always about statistics, but you guys are pretty even almost across the board on both sides. Their team, other than, you know, their scheme's a little bit different, but what they're trying to accomplish is very similar to what we want to accomplish. Uh, being the physical team, the team that's always wanting to put their nose in there and not, not afraid to get in a little fight if they need to. But they are trying to definitely accomplish the same things that we are. Uh, be physical, run the ball, and then be solid on defense. And so, yeah, that's it's kind of like looking in the mirror almost. Not trying to ask you for any secrets, but what are some of the keys for you, Chase, on Friday to have success? Up front, it's really who who's going to win that up front battle is going to is going to be the key to our success. If we can win that, uh, be more physical, own the line of scrimmage, both, <clears throat> both offense and defense. We'll be a little bit more comfortable, but it's that's easier said than done. And finally, uh, what a way to start conference play. I know the West Conference has a lot of good teams in it, but, boy, you get your rival right to start conference play. Our whole West Conference is every week is going to be – it's going to be a battle every single week that we play in our conference. And just to get out of our conference <laughs> it is going to be quite a challenge. Chase Kissler with the Powell Panthers. Thank you so much for your time today. Best of luck against Cody on Friday. Thank you. Continuing our conversation with our Wild Peps Game of the Week as voted on by you, the fan. It's the Cody Bronx against the Powell Panthers. Big Park County rivalry. It happens to be the conference opener for both these teams. It's number three and number one in the wildpeps.com coaches and media football rankings. On the phone with me is the head coach of the Cody Bronx, Mac McFadden and Matt First of all, you're off to a 3-0 and start. What have you liked? What has concerned you in the first three games of this season? We're a young team, and uh, I've liked it. I think these kids have, have shown we knew they were very athletic, you know, replacing the whole line, and we had to replace a lot of starters. So what I've liked is they've started to gel, started to come together. Um, you know, we still make some mistakes, young, young mistakes, but young teams do. But I've liked the way they've started to gel and, and coming together. It seems like you got to spread the football around to a number of different guys. I know you really want to establish your run game, uh, but it seems like you've got a number of different guys to go to in, on that side of the ball. Our skill positions are deep, and each one of them kind of has a little different skill set. So uh, we've got we've got some speed on that side of the ball, and really, you know, it's kind of a case of who's got the hot hand and distributing the ball around. So loved our depth there. Loved what the kids have done with that. Very unselfish kids. Nobody's worried about carries or yards or touches. You know, if that can continue, I think we'd be pretty tough to stop. What are you seeing out of your quarterback, uh, Caleb Pryor? He's just a senior. He's He was injured last year. He's a big kid with a big arm. Uh, we've always known that. But I think more than anything this year, he's grown up, really matured, distributes the ball well. He runs our offense well. And most importantly, he's, he's become a, a really good leader in the huddle. And that's that's number one. He's got he's to help those guys calm down and, and really get him in the right direction. So been really impressed with him as a senior. I know that Nick Talich does a good job carrying the football, but he also kind of anchors you defensively. Uh, not surprising, I guess, that he's got a little nose for the football, given the Talich name in this state. Yeah, he, uh, it's in his blood. Kid's a born football player. He's got a great nose for the ball. He uh, plays a lot bigger than he is. He's got great speed, very athletic, but he'll, uh, you'll feel it when he hits you. He loves the, just the physical nature of football, and we love that about him. Do you need anybody else to maybe kind of come along on that side of the football a little bit more? Well, you know, the, the other two linebackers have done a good job, too. It's just I uh, sometimes think they get overshadowed. But Keaton Stone, he's a returning all-state linebacker, and he's a he's a stud, too. Sometimes it's just a race between the, to the ball between those two. And then <laughs> and we have a young sophomore coming up, Zach Schroeder, a linebacker that's doing a terrific job as well. So we've been really happy with our linebackers. So, like, they're – 
very fast and athletic and can play all over the field. And, you know, I know Nick gets a lot of the points and he's kind of the the leader of that, but, but he's surrounded by some good guys as well. And, you know, of course, any linebacker is only as good as guys in front behind him. So I really think it's been a team effort. I think Nick's getting a lot of the points right now, but, but it's been a really good defensive effort. Well, you start conference play, and what a way to start conference play with your big county rival there, Matt. That's right. We uh, we get to ease into conference play, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, when the schedule came out, I think everyone saw it, and you circle it every year. And starting out conference is always big, and starting out conference against your rival uh, 24 miles away, and it's it's even bigger. So, you know, both of us going into the game with the record that we have, and one team's going to get a head start on conference play. It's a big week, you know. It's love this week, but it's it's really what we love about football. And this is this is what you love about high school football is a rivalry game, you know, for conference and two undefeated teams. And you know, got all the respect in the world for those guys. But it's a it's a black and blue game, and we we love that. Talk about that rivalry a little bit more, Matt. You've been around it for quite a while. What makes the Cody Powell rivalry so special from your perspective? Well, I think it's, it's been around a long time. You know, historically. You've got the old timers that they'll talk about that game. We got coaches on staff that, that played in that game 30, 40 years ago, and they still remember it in every play and they talk about it. <laughs> uh, I think it's a respect thing. You got two good programs that each respect each other, and uh, you know, you know it's going to be a good game. So it's it's been pretty pretty balanced across the years if you go if you go all the way back, and and I think that's what makes a good rivalry. You know, and, and both teams are both teams are in it year in year out. It's physical. Uh, you got the the old guard that like to tell the stories and the, embellish the stories each year as they come out, uh, and it's 24 miles away in in a state where, especially in the Western Conference, we travel all over the place. Right. To play somebody 24 miles away is is rare. So uh, I think it's just all those factors that lead into it. And then there've been some big games, big playoff games, and implications on the line with that. What do you look at when you see Powell and, and Coach Kissler's squad? Is, is it pretty similar to what you guys want to do, do you feel? They're a different team. They're, they're big, physically a little bigger team than us. We rely a little bit more on our speed. <clears throat> but they're, they're very balanced. They're, they're big up front. Uh, they can run the ball really well inside. Got a great fullback. They can, they can throw the ball on the perimeter. Uh, got some big receivers that go up for the ball, and then they can run the ball on the perimeter. So you know, I feel like they're, they're a very balanced offense, not – not many holes, uh, and then defensively, they're they're solid as they always are. Uh, Coach Haney does a terrific job with their defense. They're, they're not super flashy. They just they're very very sound in discipline defense, and I mean that in the best way. So you, you have to beat them. They're not going to beat themselves. So um, they're they're a tough team. You, you're going to have to you're going to have to come to play. They're going to be physical, and they're going to make you earn every every yard. Without giving away any sort of secrets in the game plan, what are some of the big things that have to go your way on Friday night, do you feel? Well, I think like any game, and this one especially, we got to hang on to the ball. Um, and we got to get a few takeaways. So if we can get a steal a possession or two here or there, I think that's going to be good. Uh, got to control the line of scrimmage. They're, they're big. They're going to they're gonna try to run their ball right at us. We got to control that. And then on the other side of the ball, um, we got to find some – some ground to run the ball, um, which is tough because they got a they got a very good D line, and, and then you need some big plays. You know, you need some explosive plays throughout a game. So there's enough athletes on the field. I uh, hope we can limit theirs, and I hope we can get a few more than them. Matt, thanks so much for your time and talking about a big matchup in 3A, particularly in the West, when the the top four of you are all playing each other this week. And I know it's a huge rivalry matchup. Best of luck Friday against Powell. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it.